Over the past three days, we've been exploring Gari Island, the largest sand island in the world, which is located just off the eastern coast of Queensland, Australia. We've been having a blast cruising down the beautiful island beaches, learning about the culture, soaking in the magical wonders hidden within the heart of this island, spending some quality time with family and friends, and of course, having some great meals in camp and even trying a few new things. On the next leg of this adventure, we travel further north on the island in search of an old shipwreck, visit a few more magical places, work hard on avoiding getting stuck in the sand, and experience a bit of car trouble that will cause us to make a difficult decision. Join us as we bring you along our Australian island adventure. This morning, we slept in a little bit extra and had a lazy morning hanging around camp as Justin made some pancakes. But these are not just your run-of-the-mill pancakes. These are thinned down just a little, kind of like a crepe, but a little bit thicker. And then he fills them with all kinds of goodness, like a little brown sugar, some fresh lemon juice. Then he rolls them up and oh, so simple and good. A rolled pancake, brown sugar and lemon. No, of course. What? It's exactly how it should taste. It's wonderful. Thank you, dude. No worries, man. You're welcome. Nice, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, it's good, yeah? Oh, I could eat a dozen of those. Yeah. This is going in the menu. Uh, I told Regina we we're going to figure out how to make those. Oh, man. So good. What a great morning. This has been uh, one of those mornings where you just don't wake up early, you sleep in a little bit, you listen to the sound of the ocean, you enjoy some incredible breakfast food. There is still cooking going on. I think everybody's been cooking back there for over an hour. I'm two cups of coffee in, and uh, I'm in Australia. Regina and I are having the time of our lives. Yesterday was such an incredible day. Today, uh, I, I'm not really sure what's in store, but we are packing up. We're going to uh, move to a different campsite. We're going to head uh, to a different part of the island, and uh, we're going to see uh, some, different, uh, some different terrain, some different scenery. and supposed to get to camp a little early tonight and just relax a little bit more which is absolutely fine with us you know the last thing we wanted to do was come to Australia and just be constantly on the move and making sure we have mornings like this where we can just relax enjoy some good camaraderie some good food and uh, take our time is perfect so I think today's gonna be a pretty chill day but I'm still excited to see uh, see what's to come but we're, we're in no rush to leave. So, Justin, yeah. what do you have there buddy? This is a blue bottle. This is the biggest one I've ever seen, so there's going to be no swimming um, this weekend at the beach. These things here, there isn't an Australian kid that hasn't been stung by oh, a blue wow. bottle. I've been stung by hundreds of them. But this is all venomous, oh my so the whole tail. So if you can imagine this thing sits on top of the water yeah. and floats on top of the water, and this whole tail, well, you can see how long it is. This whole tail just sits underneath it. Wow. And what happens is when it blows, Easterlies, they blow them all into the beach on the coast. So when you're swimming in the surf when you're a kid, you can imagine this whole thing just gets wrapped uh, around your whole body and it stings like hell, uh, yeah? yeah? One of the new features about the Patriot Campers X3 Gen 2 is it has a remote control. And so now putting this away is completely automated. So you hit a button, how easy and nice and convenient is that? Ah. How good is that?
today, we are gonna be putting in a lot of miles as we head north. Oh, keep doing that. We're gonna be putting in a lot of kilometers as we head north. But first, a little short run south to go top off our water tanks. We've already been out here for three days now, and we still have a couple more days to go. We probably have enough water, but just a good idea since we have the chance to go ahead and top these guys off. In the US, guys, uh, finding water when you're on your travels is sometimes a challenge, but here in Australia, it's no big deal. Everybody's really cool about it. The other thing is, this new spout on the trailer is flush with the outside, so it makes it much easier to fill. So we're topping off, and uh, maybe we'll even get a shower tonight. So looking forward to uh, seeing where we end up. Uh-oh, come on, Christian, you got this. Bets were at the beginning of this trip that I was gonna be the one to get bogged down and stuck in the sand, but Christian is struggling to get through this little section, even though he's got all the horsepower. All right, you got it, you got it, no problem. On we go. on the beach and we spotted yet another dingo. This is probably the fifth or sixth one we've seen so far this trip. And while they look pretty harmless, they are not to be messed with. The week following this trip, the campgrounds here on Gari Island were closed because of a dingo attack. Be very careful around these guys. They are a predator. Outstanding. Good morning. Outstanding. That is a good word. <laughs> it's a Navy thing. It's a Navy thing. Yes, the drive been up here this morning. It's been nice, huh? Yeah, it's so beautiful, and you you know you just kind of get in this zone and just cruising through here. It's great. You just waste hours and absolutely hours uh, driving on the beach. But guys, look, we're here, here like Creek. So this would have to be, I would say, my favorite spot on the entire island. Oh. Oh wow, that's saying a lot after yesterday. Yeah, and you can actually say how popular it is. See all the, the vehicles obviously up there in the distance. I'm in high range too, so there's a good chance I'm gonna get bogged in front of everyone. But the water comes out of the creek and every single time you come to, uh, come to the island, obviously if we come up here once a year, the outlet back into the water, into the ocean, changes uh, into different spots every time, hey, Christian? Yep, certainly does. I'd like to point out that there is another Jeep here, so that's 19 that I've seen so far this trip. 19 Jeeps in the whole of Australia. I think there's 20. I think they sell 20. <laughs> that's funny. Eli Creek is the largest freshwater creek on the east side of Gari Island, and it pours over 4 million liters of water into the ocean every hour. And for us here in America, that's a little over a million gallons of water. There's a lot of fresh water flowing down this thing. It's a popular destination for folks to come out here and swim and grab some rafts and float down the creek. We're going to set up camp here, enjoy a little lunch, and just soak it all in. And we'll go explore the creek a little bit and just have a little fun. Because look, you got to enjoy this while you're here. Well, Justin, it's been uh, a gorgeous day at the beach, mm. and then now we're here at this creek. But you made a bold statement coming yeah. up here. You said this is your favorite spot on Fraser Island. Yep. After yesterday, man, how is this better? What is it so special about this? Spot? Oh, look, there's there's many many beautiful spots, and every every single spot on the island's got its own. I suppose its own its own certain beauty or thing to do. But here at Eli Creek, when we go for a walk up through that creek up there, you're going to see something that you've never seen before. It's a it's a uh, look we'll, we'll maybe wait and let, let the footage do the talk and when you get up there i want to see your first reaction but generally speaking 
this is a whole day event down here. We'll come down here 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll have the barbecue going all day, the family, kids running around, you know. I'll have all my little nieces and nephews and cousins down in here. The teenagers have a ball. We're not far from the Mahino. My old man to be fishing out the front. Um, you, you can waste days at this awesome, place. Awesome, Well, I can't wait to see it. it. Sounds like a lot of memories here for you. A lot of, me lot, a lot of memories right here on. for me. But when we get up that, um, up that river there, you'll see exactly what I'm talking right about. Right on. We fired up some coals so Justin could barbecue a few kebabs for lunch. Regina put together a few snacks for everyone to nibble on, and she made a couple peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for Justin and Christian. And it's odd to me that they've never had one before. Let's see what they think. Justin, you've never had a PB&J sandwich? Never, in my life. Okay. Christian? Never. What are your thoughts, Christian? I feel like you need like a full size one to like warm up to it. Okay. Like, Justin? I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really don't. I'm confused right now. Yeah. It's not bad, but I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I don't know. Yeah, it's like mid. Uh, mm. I grew up eating hundreds of those when I was a kid. I've, we've heard about them. I've yeah. just, I've never had one. Well, never there you tried go. it. There you go. I don't, yep, I've tried it. And I probably feel the same way about this. As Regina fell about Vegemite. Okay, all yeah. right. Fair I'm enough. glad I tried it, but... Mm, hey, you tried it. Yeah, not really my jam. <laughs> jam. <laughs> <laughs> After a good long while of relaxing and eating a bit too much, we made our way up the boardwalk to the top of the creek. The girls brought their raft and had a few good laughs as they made their way down this freshwater creek. This water is pure and clean, and it's said that it takes a hundred years for the rain to filter through the sand dunes in the center of the island before making its way here to the creek. During the water's journey, it's been filtered so much that you can drink right from the creek. Just make sure you do it towards the top and not down here where everybody's walking around. Justin shared with us that when he was a kid, this boardwalk wasn't even here, and they would often have this entire place to themselves. Today, this is a must-see destination for folks visiting Gari Island, so it's become a bit popular. But even with a few folks here, we still enjoyed this beautiful spot. Look, 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 look. Look at the fish. There's two of them. Oh, there's a couple of them. Yeah, yeah crocodile. Oh, here comes some more. It's baby crocodile. There's more of them. Yeah, yeah see, he just, he just went under that shelf. Yeah. Look, he went under the shelf. It is uh, just before three o'clock in the afternoon and we have just been relaxing. Yeah. And eating. And journaling and just chilling. And chilling, which is perfect. It's exactly what we should be doing today here at this spot. This is a beautiful spot. I'm so thankful that Justin brought us here. This has a lot of memories for him, so I think this was pretty special for it him. It was to show pretty us. cool. And it's just a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place, but there are a bunch of tour buses showing <laughs> yeah. up now. So I think we're getting ready to head out of here. And yeah. I'm excited because at this next spot is one that when I was doing my research, I got really, I was like, oh, I want to hope, I hope really? we get to see that. So, okay. yeah, so we're going to go check that out. We'll show you here in a minute what it is because it's actually just down the beach. to the tides and it's something Justin keeps talking about time and time again as we move from one place to the next and during and depending on what day it is the tides are different and we had a full moon and so we we've seen that the tides come all the way up right to the berm on the beach and so we started out the day with some pretty high tides so we were hugging those berms and the sand is a lot looser you really got to keep your momentum up and, and I'll tell you I haven't done this much sand driving before Regina was kind of the first time you've done it and you know we were just kind of getting used to it and we're in a vehicle that's not ours it's a manual yeah. and so it's a little bit of work it was squirrely for yeah. a minute kind of fishtailing and yeah yeah but now the tide is I don't know it's it's out a little bit so we're on a little bit harder pack and then we're able to make uh, a little bit quicker time and I can already see our next oh, destination up just ahead that's cool. this is gonna be uh -huh. super exciting
This is what remains of the SS Mahino that was shipwrecked back in 1935 during a massive cyclone. This was once a beautiful cruise liner that was 400 feet in length and carried 420 passengers between New Zealand and Australia. But of special interest to both Regina and I, both having been corpsmen in the Navy, is this was converted to a hospital ship during World War I that carried a medical staff of over 70 people. They were instrumental in the treatment of casualties off the coast during World War I between 1915 and 1916. Today, all that remains are the rusted hull structures that are slowly being eaten away by the elements of the ocean. I imagine in 20 or 30 years time, there will be little left of this once magnificent ship, but I'm glad that today we got to see just a bit of it. Well, that was awesome. That was something I was really looking forward to. And I yeah. will say all the pictures and the video that I've seen uh, on that shipwreck did not do it justice. Being up close to it like that and just seeing how the ocean has just kind of reclaimed that. It was covered in barnacles. Oh yeah, and the rust. I mean, you think about like all the work and money that went into that ship to build it and now it's just laying on a beach. Someday it won't even be here. No, but it's pretty cool. Pretty it's cool. It's it now. Yeah, I'm glad we stopped for that one, guys. Now, we've got a little bit of a haul to get to camp, so thankfully we've got some low tide and we're gonna pick up the pace. About another hour's drive up the beach and we turned off to where we'll be camping for the night. And this time, we're gonna be staying at an actual campground. And generally, when we are on long trips, sometimes it's nice to take a break and stay somewhere with some facilities. And this was gonna be the perfect spot for this evening. All right guys, we've made it to our campsite for the night, and this is a private campground. But the good news is they have some facilities here, including some showers, uh, which will be nice. And there's power and water. And the other thing is when we came in, we crossed over an electric fence. So they actually shouldn't have any dingoes or any other crazy wildlife in here. So we're just going to get set up and uh, enjoy the evening. All right, not a bad camp spot, huh? No, it's beautiful. And we get showers tonight? That is the most important thing. There's showers and we have electricity. 100%. Okay, <laughs> so I think it's fair to say on our Gen 1 X3 uh -huh. that you have helped me many times, but it's not yeah. something you were able to do on your own, no. setting it up and breaking it I'm down. I'm not as tall as you, and yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of work. It's definitely uh, a more challenging. This one, uh -huh. I think you can do on your own. Are you ready to give it a try? I am ready. There's the keys. Ooh, okay. What do I do? It's like magic. <laughs> I could like file my nails. Alright, now we can come over here and get the ladder. Pull the ladder out. Can't press it anymore and then lock it into place. There you go. Good and top. You don't want that fabric to be stuck. Look at that. Is it done? It's done now. You just got to do the little things like we normally do, but otherwise it's good. Yay! Brother, what an incredible day, yeah? It's amazing. Yeah. The shipwreck, I think, was awesome. And then that oh. river, oh. The, the whole thing, I mean, the whole the whole beach, um, even uh, the people, the people are super friendly, super kind people. I, I love it. And yeah. the scenery, I mean. Yeah. It was awesome. Okay, you guys are already working on dinner. What's uh, What are you prepping? My wife, Joyce, is going to make us some... Uh, beef tortas okay and we're gonna have some corn in the cob direct in the fire awesome dude well i uh, i'm excited for dinner guys if you've never had corn on the cob prepared this way let me tell you it's something you should really consider trying mayo butter parmesan cheese lemon and some hot sauce it might seem like a bit much but i can assure you it's not I think Justin was a bit surprised at how good it tasted. Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. I think you guys just topped the uh, meal of the trip. Wow. It's, a, it's addicting. Okay, yeah. There's so much going on. Oh, there's so many different flavors going on there. That is, that's epic, mate. Well done. I'm going to make that for Sarah. She would love it. And it's super easy to make. Ending the day with a good meal, surrounded by friends and family, and kicking back around the campfire and having a few laughs, I'm not sure it gets any better than this. Well, 
Well, good morning, guys. It is, uh, it's a beautiful morning. The sun is out finally. Uh, last night, we got hammered with the rain, and they were those big, massive raindrops just pelting the tent. So it's a little humid, but the sun's coming out, and I think we're gonna get lucky for the rest of the day. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, my voice is a little crusty this morning. I feel like I'm kind of coming down with a cold. I don't know, maybe a little more coffee will help. Uh, but I'm hanging in there. We got, uh, we got a whole amazing day ahead of us. We're gonna be heading north, and Justin has a couple more things planned for us today, and then we're gonna find camp and do some more of this, just relaxing a little bit. So I'm excited to see what the rest of the day has in store. Here we go, a little coffee, back up. Almost time to roll out of here. Good morning, mate. Good morning, mate. How are you? Cracking. <laughs> <laughs> so the girls are sleeping in the tent. Yes. You've been sleeping in a swag. Dude, I'm in Australia. Yeah. So I gotta try the swag. Pretty gotta happy with it. Experience. I'm super happy. Yeah. Uh, this will be great, like for for the JK. Yeah. We're gonna have a rooftop tent. It's super easy to set up. It's it's pretty comfortable. Believe it or not, everything is in there. Uh, it's got the mattress in there. The sheeting and my roof, I mean, my uh, sleeping bag and pillow. Yeah. So, yeah, everything well, is in there. These things are all over the place on this island. Yes. So, there's, a, there's obviously a good reason for that. Absolutely. I can't wait for today, dude. Yes, me too, man. This morning, we sadly had to say goodbye to Christian and Sarah. They both have to get back in time for school tomorrow. And honestly, they have been so much fun to hang out with. We're really going to miss them during the rest of our adventure. Once the rest of the team was packed up, we headed out of camp and worked our way back onto the beach. We do have to pick up the pace today because we have a lot of ground to cover. Our goal today is to check out two of the natural wonders on the northern part of the island. And we need to beat the tides and we've got to work our way through some of the thickest sand we've encountered yet. So, hon, <laughs> Justin was saying that place is notorious for bogging uh -huh. folks down. You laid the hammer down, girl. How was that? I did what he told me to do, and it worked. So, <laughs> it yeah, good. it was fun. Okay, well, it, it looked awesome fun. going through there. Cool. <laughs> Justin, beautiful day so far. Yeah. Where are we now? Okay, so we're at Champagne Pools, which is a, a headland here on, on the island. So we've just come over Indian Head. We're in the back Orchid Beach. Uh, this is another, I know I keep saying it, but this is another place you can just burn a day here. <laughs> Typically speaking, when we come down here, I actually forgot I'll bring goggles and all the rest of it. It's a natural formed spa. That's mm. what it is, mm. in the rocks. Okay, and you're saying that uh, this is a, a pretty intense area for whales and sharks as well, yeah? Yeah, so generally on a, like a really clear day at the moment, it's blowing 25 odd knots out, out there easterly. I think we're going to get really lucky to see whales, but this time of year specifically, uh, the whales are all starting to migrate north, so they're all heading north. We might get lucky and see some whales, but generally on a clear day, looking across the head in this bay back to Indian Head, you will see sharks swimming around, you'll see dolphins, you'll see whales off the coast. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed that we get to see some of that stuff. Incredible. Today. We made the short walk down to the Champagne Pools, and these are a very unique natural attraction here on Gari. Now with low tide and a calm day, which we don't have today, these rock formations form natural pools that you can go swimming in. And it's actually very safe to swim in these areas because you don't have to worry about rip tides or sharks getting into here. But today, we've got crashing waves and wind. And honestly, you could sit here and watch this for hours.
I don't think any of us wanted to leave this incredible spot, but we do need to begin working our way south. Plus, I think we are all starting to think about lunch. I mean, look, if you haven't figured it out yet, this group likes to eat. So we made our way south towards Indian Head Rock, where we had this beautiful little bay all to ourselves. It was easy to see that everyone was getting hungry because as soon as we pulled up, all three trailer kitchens were quickly in action and cooking up something delicious. Justin, my friend, Champagne Pools did not disappoint. That was gorgeous, brother. Unbelievable, man, isn't it? So good. Yeah, I was just saying before, like it's a, it's a different, I think now I'm a little bit older. Yeah. I think I appreciate things a little bit differently. I know that probably sounds a little bit cliche or whatever. But I've been there that many times, and even today, just looking around, I'm like, dude, this is this is our backyard. Yeah. This is where I live. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just, oh, it's it's just such a magical place, it's isn't so it? Gorgeous. Yeah. What's uh, what's the lunch plan? What do you got, mate? I'm just gonna do dingers. Like yeah. I said to you guys on the first day, that's really a staple thing around here. You always have sausages in, in the fridge. So yeah, we're just gonna do sausages, bit of avocado, got some bread left over. Now we're getting to the end of the trip. You know what it's like. Yep. Now you just start consuming oh, and yeah. picking and. Yep. This is when the best meals come together. Oh yeah, that's what Virginia's doing over there right now. Yeah, yep, yep. awesome. All right, so we're gonna have an awesome lunch. So, what would you think of Champagne Pools? Huh, it was breathtaking. Yeah. I mean, I could have stayed there for hours just staring at the ocean. All the shades of blue, I mean, it was like turquoise and indigo, and it was yeah. just, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, crashing over the rocks, just yeah. so, it's almost meditating. Oh, it was. Yeah. I feel just so serene and peaceful after spending yeah. some time there. What uh, What are you doing there for lunch? Um, I am simper gumbying lunch. So, using some leftovers, I'm gonna make a, I guess a curried chicken salad, boiling some eggs, and it's boiling over, so I need to tend to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so chicken salad. Sounds good. Regina took the leftover chicken kebabs that we had grilled up the other night and made chicken salad. Now, I can't say I would love chicken salad, I just like it, but this blew my mind. It was so good. I might have eaten two sandwiches. Just saying, it was good. <laughs> Did it work? Nailed, nailed it. <laughs> yeah, nailed it. Marco and Georgina made sandwiches for everyone. And once again, because we had so much food, we all ate way too much. But we're on vacation, so it's okay, right? That's what I keep telling myself anyway. While we were eating, we noticed we were being watched. I think he is probably just waiting for us to leave so he could see if there were any scraps around that we left behind. But we were careful to make sure we cleaned up everything before we left. This has been, yet again, another epic place. It's crazy how many beautiful locations there are here on Gari. If this place isn't paradise, I don't know what is. It's gonna be hard to leave when the time comes, but for now, we need to begin working our way south and start looking for camp before it gets dark. For this next leg of the adventure, we did a little driver swap. Regina got behind the wheel of the 200 series Land Cruiser, and because this thing is like a Cadillac inside, I think she fell in love with it. This is really a nice vehicle. Marco got behind the wheel of the 79 series and with it being a manual, you could tell he was in his element and really enjoying the drive. It was a couple hours down the beach before we made it far enough south to begin looking for camp and finally we found another great spot and we still had plenty of daylight. All right, everyone, we are here at our last campsite on Gari Island and Justin made a trip to the bait shop just down the beach. He's got some fishing poles, so we're gonna give it a go and see if we can't catch some fish. And Marco ceviche. said he will make some ceviche if we can catch some, so we'll see if we're lucky. Justin also got us a nice little treat. I've done a lot of fishing over the years, but mostly freshwater. The only ocean fishing I've done is in a boat. I've never fished from the beach. Fishing from the beach requires you to get wet, and as you can see here, I'm wearing a hoodie. It's winter time in Australia, so the water isn't exactly warm, but that's okay. It will be worth it if we catch something. My first cast was a fail. Yeah, yeah. I need to get used to this gear. <laughs> there he goes. Awesome. The second cast, however, oh yeah, a nice one. I don't think it was even a full two minutes later and fish Walk off. backwards up the beach. So when you get up the beach, you can drag him onto the sand. No, what is it? Oh, 
Keep going, keep going. That's a good fish, man. It looks like a big fat whiting. Yeah. Bring it over here, mate. Fish number one, yeah. That was correct, dude. That was less than a minute. Oi, Marco, ceviche. This is what's well, known as a tailor fish, and they are abundant here off the coast of the island and can get pretty large. Thankfully, this one is big enough to keep, and I'm excited to see what Marco is going to do with it. We stayed out here for a good hour or so trying to see if we could catch a few more, but no more bites. But for me, fishing is always relaxing. Even if the water's a bit cold, I'm still full of joy out here. Once we got back up at camp, Justin volunteered to clean the fish and Marco began cleaning up the fillets to make his famous ceviche. I've had many of Marco's ceviches over the years and they never disappoint. Is it safe to say you've never made a ceviche with a tailor fish before? Absolutely, never. Never. What's, uh, what's your plan? What do you got going on? Same recipe. I'm just <laughs> going to chop the really fine, you yeah. can see. And so I got the onions there. I'm going to do some tomato. I'm going to do some cucumber and some, a little bit of jalapenos, salt, pepper, and then maybe some, some of that salsa, tapatillo. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I can't wait, dude. I love your ceviche. Meanwhile, Regina was working in the kitchen cooking up a fish alternative. It's a little chilly tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> more than a little. <laughs> Although I'm probably warmer than you, your legs were all wet and your shorts were soaked from yeah, fishing. I was having a blast out there. I know you were. You were the last one in. I know. <laughs> all right, so uh, look, you don't do fish, so nope. ceviche is not your thing. Nope. What's the fish alternative tonight? <laughs> the fish alternative, it's, uh, I guess it's like a German knockoff my parents used to make. It's basically potatoes that are going to be nice and crispy with some peppers, green peppers, red peppers, some onions, and some sausage. Nice all together and add some seasoning to jazz it up and simple, hearty filling. And more. All right, so Juliana was out there and she <laughs> caught a big old bucket of what looks like clams. Pippies. But they're pippies. Pippies. What's the difference? I have no idea. I think pippies are from Australia and clams <laughs> are from America maybe. All right, yeah. tell me about what these are. Um, so yeah, they're just a, they're a shellfish. That obviously they're called a pippy. I think they're exactly the same as a clam. Okay. To be honest, I've never had a clam before. <laughs> so all we're letting them do now. And my dad used to tell me this. Well, I don't know whether it's a wife's tale or not, but you leave them in a bucket of fresh water out of the ocean, uh -huh. and they'll start spitting all the sand out okay. because they're obviously they are full of sand. They walk around. You can see them at the moment. See how they're, they're, the kind of the meat's coming out. I don't know the the organism, I suppose you call it. And they actually run along the sand in the shallows of the water. Okay. And then when the tide runs out, they dig themselves into the sand, but they, they open their shell, yeah. so they're obviously full of sand. So if you take them straight out and open them up and put them in a fry pan, it's going to be really gritty. Okay. So we'll leave them in there for, you know, they've been in there 15 minutes, maybe another half an hour. Yeah. We're going to get rid of all those little tiny ones. We'll chuck all of them back mm -hmm. in. Then we'll cut them open. We're going to fry them up with some garlic. Yeah. And we're just going to make garlic, olive oil, pasta that's it that's, salt that's and pepper awesome. yeah that's yeah. all you need very very simple yeah. but beautiful yeah really nice flavor yeah marco thank you for making the ceviche thank you for catching that fish buddy yeah i never thought i would catch a taylor fish in australia but i'm glad that we're putting it to good use here we go <laughs> money dude this is so good. Justin, get in there, buddy. Oh. That is amazing, oh, dude. Know, know, oh, that's going to be gone in a heartbeat. I'll be mighty. I'll be mighty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Ready? Mm. I, 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 uh, There's a potty in my mouth. Anyone seriously. Want, anyone want to get in there? That ceviche did not last long, but honestly, every meal tonight was incredible. What a great feast for our last night here on the island. The next morning, I was up pretty early and was treated to a beautiful red sunrise as I began making my coffee. I haven't been fancy with coffee this trip since this isn't really my camping gear or my kitchen. I'm just drinking instant coffee. And before you chastise me, just know that this is still far better than the Navy coffee I drank for many years. And drinking it out here on this beach, yeah, perfect. It's the last day, boys. What do you think? I don't want to go. I know Regina doesn't want to go home. 
disappointed? Yeah. Not at all. No? Not at all. Not at all. I, I wish we could stay three, four more days. Yeah. Yeah. See the whole thing and experience the rest of it. But at least you got a taste and it's might be enough to bring you back, I think. Dude, this was so incredible. I was thinking about it this morning when I was making my coffee. I was like, you know, we came out here and we got to experience it through your eyes, mm. through your family history. Mm. And then and then to come out here to Gari and experience the culture that you introduced us to yes. through, through those folks. Yeah, big ones Dude, tonight, yeah. you couldn't come to Australia and have an experience like this. Yeah. This has been incredible. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Even for me, yeah. and I think the reaction from you two guys, seeing your reaction, I think it was like we had the conversation when we were in Anza, when we were traveling all together, you know what I mean? To see the reaction from somebody else, for me, <clears throat> probably makes me think a lot a lot of questions you guys ask why is this like this or why is that like that and I'm kind of like it just is I don't know why it just is it's, you know and it's probably just forced forced me to maybe think about you know the place a little bit more but um yeah a little bit sad it's the last day and it's a Monday and work's turned back on yeah so your brain starts going back into that mode right and we we'll just enjoy this last morning I think we'll have a lot the last breakfast and um yeah, head down the beach and just sort of a beautiful drive back back down the Gulf. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's been an epic trip, huh? Epic. Epic. This last sunrise here on Gari was beautiful. What a way to send us off. We enjoyed a very delicious breakfast, and as we were packing up, I was getting ready to say goodbye here on the video and wrap things up, thinking that it was just gonna be a short drive out and we'd head home. Well, hold that thought for a second. Remember in the very beginning of this adventure when Justin handed me the keys to this 79 Land Cruiser and said it's his baby and take good care of it? Well, on our way back as we were heading out, the tide began to come in. And I apologize, I didn't film all of this. But when the tide came in that required us to move inland away from the water and go over a pretty big sand dune. Justin and Marco made it through no problems, but I was struggling to get through and on the third attempt and getting on the gas a bit and we heard something under the hood, some steam started coming out and the battery light came on. So I got on the radio, told them there was not something wrong and we limped our way to where they were waiting for us. So yeah. what are you seeing now that you've climbed well, in there? As soon as you come up here, like, there was water pumping out everywhere. I'm like, oh, well, it's done a hose or maybe cracked a radiator, but it's a lot worse than that. The fan, whole front of the fan snapped off oh. and it's punched through the radiator and the reason the battery light's on obviously it's thrown the belt oh yeah so the alternator's not charging so this will be the very first time ever and i'm not trying to make history here that the black truck's going to get towed home oh my gosh that's a that's a irreparable it's over mm. yep but we're on the hard ground yeah so if this would have happened down there, yeah. we would have had a real big problem. Yeah. It's a really hard run all the way. We're on the inland track now because of the tide's high, so we're gonna have to run it all the way to the barge. Oh, I can't tell you how awful I feel. This truck has performed incredible on this trip, and now I broke it. I'm really sorry, Justin. I hope this is an easy fix. We had to get creative with towing, and thankfully the Patriot Campers trailer has some recovery points. And while we were pushing the limits of these tow points, we did take it easy. We really didn't have a whole lot of options being so far out here. I can say for me, this is the first time a vehicle towing a trailer, towing another vehicle towing a trailer, <laughs> recovery has been done. It worked. I just had to be very mindful of keeping the strap tight. When you're being recovered, you need to keep that strap from jerking the other vehicle. It puts added stress on that recovery vehicle you don't want. Because I didn't have power brakes anymore because I couldn't run the engine, it was tough keeping it smooth. We finally made it to the beach and opted to shorten the tow strap to make it easier to get on the barge. Fingers crossed we can do this in one fluid motion. If we get bogged in the sand trying to get up on the barge, that's gonna introduce a whole new challenge. Thankfully, we were successful. So I was given very clear instructions on day one here in Australia. Don't break the black truck. Don't break <laughs> the black truck. I, I failed, dude, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is, this is uh, the first time ever the black truck, look, it breaks stuff all the time. That's what it loves to do. The black truck likes to challenge me. And it's one of those, it's an emotional relationship, yeah. right? It's a roller coaster. And yeah. it is, it's a relationship with that truck. She's never let me down before. Yeah. She's never gone home on a tow truck yeah. before. It's gonna be a first. So if you're gonna do it, you may as well do it properly, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it's just something simple. 
It is. Fan, it, belt. Yeah, it's just it's just snapped the front housing off the fan. And it could be, look, it could have just, in that, you know, getting up there, it yep. might have just grabbed a heap of sand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Got some sand in behind the pulley, bound the pulley up, and the belt's just snapped it off. It yeah. is what it is, man. It's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Well, it was a nice drive on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, getting towed back. But that's what Rams are for. You know, that's why, that's why we drive it's Rams. 700 horsepower. Like, and it didn't even feel it on the back. So, look. It is what it is. We're back. It's the end of the trip. We'll get a tow truck. You guys can jump in the ram with me. We'll have a good yarn all the way home. Yep. Epic. Cool. Guys, after four days of an incredible adventure, I did not expect to be ending it here on the side of the road waiting on a tow truck. I had a great time here, but my mission failed to take care of Justin's baby. We broke the black truck. It's all good. This is what happens when you have adventures with modified vehicles. Sometimes things happen, and thankfully it happened at the end of the trip and it's no worries to get this thing now towed out and uh, and it'll get fixed and back on the road in no time. I, I just want to say a huge, huge thanks to Justin uh, and the entire Patriot Campers crew for allowing us to have such an unbelievable adventure. One we will never forget. Being able to come out here and spending it with Regina, having our good friends Marco and his family out here was just incredible guys this was a once in a lifetime adventure how many times can you come out here to a place like this and have an adventure like this yeah it's just a bummer that it ended up with a broken truck at the end of the day it's all good though guys we're gonna go uh, be tourists for a couple days that's the plan for Regina and I and then we will be home in the US and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to have some other adventures here soon that we'll share with you I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us if you haven't been over to Patriot Campers, go check them out. I will leave a link down below. They've got all kinds of great trailers and gear. Plus, make sure you check us out over at trailrecon.com. Regina's got all kinds of recipes out on the blog. Plus, we've got gear to outfit your next camping adventure. Thanks for watching.